Hey everyone, welcome to part 26 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll add NPCs to our game. So over here you can see an NPC and if I go near him and press Z, we can talk with the NPC. Alright, so in this video, we'll just add the NPC and the dialogue system will be covered in the next video. Okay, so once we have both NPC and dialogue system implemented, we can build on top of that and create trainer battles. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making this series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get some cool rewards like access to the complete project files of the series. So let's start the video. So first let's create a game object for the NPC. So for the NPC I'm using the same sprite sheet of that of character but I just changed the color of his dress. Alright, so I'll drag the first sprite in the sprite sheet onto the scene. So right now it's not visible because of its sorting order. So I'll change the sorting layer to player. And now you can see that it's visible. And let me just change the name of the game object. Okay, and let me just change its position. So I want to place the NPC at the center of a tile. So I'll change the X to minus 3.5. And for the Y, I just want to place it, I want to place it slightly above the center. So I'll say 0.8 instead of 0.5, right? So we do this to give a little bit of perspective to the characters. We have, we have also done that for the player, okay? So right now the sorting layer of the NPC is same as that of player. So how I want this is when the player is standing below the NPC, the player sprite should appear on top. And when it's standing above the NPC, the NPC sprite should appear on top. So for that we can place the NPC in the same sorting layer of that of the player and make sure the order is also same. So for the player also, the order is zero and it's the same for the NPC and what we have to do is in the project settings in graphics we want to change the transparency sort mode to custom axis and we want to tell unity to sort based on the y axis so I'll change z to 0 and y to 1 alright so what this will do is if two sprites have same sorting order then unity will use the y position of the sprite to decide who should be on the top so let's test if that's working as expected okay so if i stand below the npc you can see that the player sprite appears on the top and if i stand above him then the npc sprite appears on the top right so that's working fine so next I want to make sure that the player cannot walk through the NPC. So right now if I try to walk through the NPC, I can do that easily. So we have to check for collision and stop that. So to check collision, first I'll add a rigid body 2D to the NPC. Okay, so I'll make the body type kinematic. So the NPC won't be affected by external force, but we'll be able to move it from the script. And next I'll add a box collider 2D. Okay, so I want to edit the box collider and make it much smaller. Okay, so that should be enough. And next for the layer of the NPC, I'll add a new layer called Intractable. So this layer will contain all the game objects that player can interact with. So I'll change the layer of NPC to Intractable. Okay, so next we need to check collision between player and the Intractable's layer. So in my player controller script, right now we have a solid objects layer. And before we try to walk onto a tile, first we'll check if there is any solid object on that tile, right? So here we also need to add the Intractables layer. 
so first I'll create a public variable for that and in the is walkable function we also need to pass the interactables layer right so to combine two layers we can just use the bitwise or operator so we can use this operator and we'll be able to combine the solid objects layer and interactables layer so now the player won't be able to walk on top of the npc so let's test that so first let's assign the interactable layer in the player controller script and let's see if the collision is working okay so you can see that player cannot walk on top of the npc right so that's working fine so next if the player is standing next to the npc and presses the z button then we should interact with the npc right so for that what we can do is when the player presses the z button we'll create an overlap circle on the tile next to it and we'll check if there are any interactables object on that tile so let's do that so inside my player controller i'll create a function called interact okay and in my handle update function if the player presses the z key i'll call the interact function so in the interact function first we need to find the tile to which the player is facing and then we need to check if there is any interactable object in that tile right so first i'll find the direction in which the player is facing okay so we can get the direction from the move x and move y variable of the animator so to get the move x and move y i can use animator dot get float and for the parameter i'll pass move x okay and for the y part of the vector we need to pass the move y variable okay so now we have the direction in which the player is facing let me just rename this to facing direction and next we can find the position of the tile next to the player by adding players current position with the facing direction right and i'll store this in a variable called interact position okay so this is the position of the tile to which the player is facing so this might be confusing for some, some of you so let's actually visualize this by drawing a line from the player's current position to the interact position so we can draw a line by using debug dot draw line okay so just like debug dot log debug dot draw line is a pretty useful function and we need to pass the start and end vector so for the start i'll say transform dot position and for the end, I'll pass the interact position. And we can also pass a color for the line. So let me just pass something like green. And for duration for which it should appear. So that let's say 0.5 seconds. Okay, so let's test the game and try to visualize this. Alright, so one thing is that you won't be able to see this in the game view. So you have to minimize the game view and if you look inside the scene view i'll just drag the game view over here okay so you can see that there is a line from player's current position to the tile which the player is facing right so if i'm facing like this then the line will be drawn to this tile and if i'm facing like this it will be drawn to this tile and similarly this is how it's drawn when I'm facing down and this is how it's drawn when I'm facing up so we are finding the position of the tile correctly so next we need to check if there is any interactable object in that tile so back in my player controller script let me just come in this draw line function and I'll use physics.overlap to check if there is any interactable object in this position 
Okay, so I'll create an overlap circle. And for the position, I'll pass the interact position. For the radius, let me pass 0.3f. And we will need to check for objects in the interactable layer, right? So let me pass that. Okay. So if there is any interactable object in this position, then this function will return a collider. So let me store that. And I'll check if the collider is not equal to null. Which means there is actually an interactable object in that tile. So in this case, we want to perform some action like showing a dialog or something. So if this object was an NPC, then we should show a dialog, right? So I'll create a new script called NPC controller to hold that logic. Okay, so inside my player folder, I'll create a new script called NPC controller. Okay, so I actually want to rename this folder to character instead of player. Okay, so I just rename that since both NPC and player are characters. So let's assign the NPC controller script to the NPC game object. And now in the player controller script, we can get the NPC controller component from the collider. Okay, so this will work, but the problem is in the future we are going to have a lot of different interactable objects, not just the NPC. So we can have things like signboard or a tree that player can cut down and different things like that. So directly referencing all those scripts over here is not a good way of doing it, right? Instead, we need a general script for all the interactable objects. So what I'll do is I'll create an interface called interactable and all the interactable objects will implement that interface. So in my scripts inside gameplay, I'll create a new script for called interactable. Let me open that. Okay, so this script is not going to be a class. Instead, it's going to be an interface. So let me remove all this. And instead of class, I'll say interface. So inside an interface, we can define functions, but we won't write the actual implementation of the function, right? So I can define a function like void interact, but this function won't have any implementation. So if I try to implement the function over here, you can see that we are getting an error called interface does not support implementation. So we can only define functions inside an interface so you might be wondering what's the use of an interface if we can't actually write the implementation how is this thing even useful so what we can do is we can create classes that implement this interface and all the classes that implement this interface should also have the implementation of all the functions defined inside the interface so in our case we want the NPC controller class to implement the interactable interface. So let me open that script. Okay. So here I'll put a comma after mono behavior and I'll make the NPC controller class implement the interactable interface. Right. So here we have an error. This is because, as I said before, if a class implements an interface, it should also have the implementation of all its function, right? So this interface has a function called interact. So this class should also have the implementation of interact. So if you read the error, it says NPC controller does not implement the function interact. So let's actually create the implementation of the interact function. Okay. And now you can see that the error is gone. So 
to test this, let's just write a debug.log inside this function. And I'll say something like interacting with NPC. So now back in our player controller, instead of getting the NPC controller directly, I can just get the interactable interface. And I can call the interact function of the interface. Right? So if this object is actually an NPC, then even though we are calling the interact function of the interactable interface, we'll actually be calling the interact function of the NPC controller. Right? I hope this makes sense. By the way, I'm using a null conditional operator over here so that this line won't crash even if get component returns null. So if this is working correctly, then when we go next to the NPC and press Z, it should show this in the console. So let's test this. Okay, so if I walk to the NPC and press Z, you can see that in the console we have this message. Right, so I can press again and it will appear again and then I can interact with the NPC from all the sites. Alright. So interaction with the NPC is working correctly. So next, instead of just printing this message in the console, we should actually show a dialog, right? So for that, we need to implement a dialog system and that's what we'll do in the next video. So I'll stop the video here. If you think this video is helpful, please make sure to leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel. That'll really help me a lot. So I'll see you in the next video.